Hello fellow timekeepers, as Global Server is currently celebrating half-year anniversary, I want to share this event which I enjoy the most during the half-year anniversary. It is a new form of gameplay that I really appreciate the developers putting thoughts into making it. Echoes of the Mountain follows the journey of Semmelweis deep into the mountains and forests to search for something which I will not spoil it for you all. First, we get to send a team of eight, the left column is our main team while the right column is mainly as backup team. We can swap any of them each stage. We start with all characters at first insight, level 40 with resonance level 4 and base psycube that we are using at level 20. As we progress through the stages, we get loots that we can use to individualize our playstyle depending on who you are playing as primary carry DPS unit. I personally am running Chunyang right here with secondary DPS 37 and using two support units. This run is by far my best run due to the RNG god blessing me with great items. Because I am using Chunyang, I am looking for items that benefit extra action damage buffs, floppy disks that boost damage for Chunyang. How does it work? Well, there are several paths that we get to choose after every stage, and each path leads to more loots or chance for floppy disks or higher rarity treasures. First, let's understand some mechanics. Notice this value on left top screen here. It shows 92 at the moment. Based on translation from CN server, I call this as enchanted value for now. This value is important to determine whether your team get debuffs or buffs. Here is a list of debuffs depending on the value. I recommend keeping it at 60 to 119 for first timers so that you play it at normal difficulty. If you are Dark Souls veteran, Probably you can push all the way to enchanted value 180. At late stage, without solid buffs from your items in 6, you might get one shot like Dark Souls boss 2. Don't say I didn't warn you. Successful clear of the stage, we get two types of currency as rewards. This pigeon gold coin which can be used to exchange for treasures at the armory during post-boss fight and fire emblems which is used to upgrade our characters in the team. Here, we are at the fork road. Picking different fork road will add or reduce your enchanted value and each road gives different rewards. Here is the list of roads that will appear along your journey. Personally, I don't think there is a specific road that you must pick in order to get the best values. This game mode is flexible and diversify your gameplay. As long as you keep in mind to keep your enchanted value between 60 to 119, I think is good enough. If you need a break to recover your health especially if you are running a team with no healer, you can pick resting area. Otherwise, I tend to pick roads that give certain treasures. Of course, you can also pick roads that do not lead to battle such as scenarios like treasure land or scenario based like the maze. You may or may not trigger some traps or land on some good treasures. Yes! Everything is RNG based here. Gotcha gaming is the way of life. Haha. <laughs> this yellow circle here shows we are at stage 3 out of 8 stages. We have to clear boss stages before we can upgrade our characters and buy items from the armory. So all the currency collected, we cannot use until then. The first floor Echoes of the Mountain is always the toughest because we are running Insight 1 characters with low damage output. This is also why high DPS carry characters like Qunyang, Koyandian also known as Spathodia in Global is recommended to speed up the run. Because the first floor always give the most frustration due to how low damage output, but the best part is towards late game when we max out our carries with rare treasures, the damage output skyrocketed and makes this game mode so addictive. I must tell you guys in advance that this mini game is quite grindy. But the rewards you get are quite good and to be honest, I do not find it boring and repetitive. Because each run is different so I personally find it quite enjoyable. As the event lasts quite a while, you can play a few runs daily. Here are the lists of rewards for this mini game. Quite generous by Bluepock team. Remember I said, we can bring a team of 8 characters inside, try to pick different variety of Aflatus to make your team versatile to combat any enemies. I switched to my Druvis for Aflatus advantage here. It's a good time. While the battle is ongoing, I wish to share this chart here. How many currency needed to upgrade each character and what is the max upgrade that we can achieve? 
Priority for the initial upgrade. I recommend giving it to your DPS to clear faster the floor faster. The final upgrade is tempting especially for DPS, Resonance 15, full max stats but try to prioritize getting other characters to at least inside too so that they can take some damage. After all, if any ally die, we lose DPS since we lose the action point. Until the torch is lit. <laughs> No one's got buttons. No, I hope the strings. It's newly made this year. Three. She walking on that. Dive and fry. Enjoy! There we are. My hands on the drop. The moment of silence. No of utterance. No, my heart with the strings. Benefit from reading. Hey, that was it. The moment of silence. Time for tongues to be moon. We walk in long nights. The scale of your soul has tilted. The balance needs to be restored. I really like Druvis's ultimate changes when she is on this skin. Finally, it is time to upgrade our characters and buy some good treasures to boost our combat power. So here, we got a silver sword, lucky rabbit foot and weakening floppy. Okay, which character should I upgrade first? I recommend Prioritus primary carry and one support or sub DPS. Chunyang is now inside 2, resonance 6. And I give the other upgrade to 6 mainly to unlock inside 3 for 6 as soon as possible to get his passive buffs for all allies. I pick Treasure Road to get more treasure and loots to prepare for boss stage later. Let's skip forward, shall we? I remember. Usually before the boss encounter, we can pick resting area to heal all allies or go for the merchant to buy more treasures. I recommend prioritizing three types of floppy discs as a must-buy. The lucky spell for critical rate and damage buff, the buff spell for granting all sorts of buffs which is quite broken and extra action spell mainly for Chunyao mains and weakened spell which places random debuffs on enemies. Most debuffs mainly reduce defense or critical resists. Floppy discs are mainly used to put into different treasure slots here which enchants it into different effects depending on what floppy discs. Spathodea. Such menacing look. Thankfully, Chunyang has a flatus counter against her. The moment of silence. Another newly made this year. <sighs> we walk in long nights. You don't want to miss it. Got you. Looking at the damage dealt by Chunyao, I just have to spam Chunyao's skills and we are good. Though, I should not have brought Druvis here. 
37 or someone neutral like a knight would be better alternative. Buttons. Another dart? It's newly made this year. No hands on the drums. Hmm. There they are. Enjoy! She's lit. Come back to me. I'll fill the cup for you. <laughs> the strings are not broken. Oh. No worries. Another cup is newly made this year. Relax. The moment is Another is newly made this year. Come back to me. We walk in long nights. There they are. I remember. All right, we are done with first floor. Two more to go. Look at all the power ups that we are getting. Time to start cooking. We have 36 fire emblems now, as always, use all into Chunyang and make her into a DPS beast. This soul storing pot is very good. If we can slot and luck spell into this, gonna be even better. Let's swap and luck floppy into this then. Okay, let's fast forward to second floor boss onwards. Time to do some shopping before we face the boss. Hopefully we get some good treasures. This honey pot is also very good regardless of what spell we slot in. This animal tooth is also a very good item because we can get 30% critical damage buff in his base form and slotting in any spell will evolve it even better. We are running out of gold coins, I guess we can buy the goggles here which can debuff enemies. I do not need healing, so those heal all allies not useful for me. Second floor big boss. Let's go. Now we have Chunyang with insight 3 and others at insight 2. I think we are good here since we have decent amount of buffs and upgrades. The moment of utterance. It's newly made this year. Another jar? The moment of sad. The moment of utter. The moment of the moment of utterance. It's newly made this year. Another jar? We walk in long nights. Benefit from reading. Got you. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. The moment of silence. The moment of utterance. It's newly made this year. Isn't that? We walk in long nights. Hmm. Got you.
The moment of silence. Another jar? It could be found. It's newly made this year. Benefit from reading. That was easier than I thought. All right. Time to get more coins and upgrades. Hopefully we get good floppy disks. We got 60 fire emblems now, and a lot of loots. And of course, all of them will go into Chunyang to fully awaken her. Resonance 2 with higher level Psycubes should be a great damage boost here. Of course I can level up 37 and Tooth Fairy but where is the fun here if I don't test my limit with Chunyang? Floor 3, final floor. From here on, it is Chunyang show time. Let me show you how strong she is right now. My Chunyang has 7 lucky stacks on her right now, with SIXS buffs and some liquor stacks too. My Chunyang can literally one-shot all these fodders easily. Looking at those numbers popping out. We are at 72 enchanted value now. Let's keep tab on this value and plan ahead. Let's try one shot this mob. Haha, ha. we really just one shot him with Chunyang. Full critical build is just awesome. I picked the blubber torch here because after every buff or counter or enchant skills, we can get good buffs or debuffs depending on what floppy we slot in. It is time to get 6 to inside 3 for the passive buffs now. Alright, time to speed run until boss encounter. Like I said, it is good to bring a variety of Aflatus characters to make the run even faster. Thankfully, I have a knight with me. Of course in future runs, we are eating good with a sold as the broken spirit character. Maybe you might say, bringing a knight seems redundant as I did not upgrade the 4th position to inside 3 so the damage seems negligible. But it is better than nothing right guys? The moment of silence. It's really made it here. Please, don't resist. Learn from silence. Enjoy! Someone is still standing. Gotcha! I remember it's called... Now, we have a couple of good items. Even if we do not slot in floppy on some of them, they still give some good buffs. We have to prioritize what items give better effects than another depending on what your playstyle is. The 
along the sides. You want another card? There we are. Victory secure. I should excuse myself. All right. Since we have enough Fire Emblems to upgrade more characters, I think is fair and good to upgrade the 3rd and 4th slot to Insight 3 for my Sub-DPS and Tooth Fairy. I picked the Slingshot here because the damage buffs is quite insane. It is almost broken. If I slot in Lucky's spell into it, Chunyang can get up 10 Lux stacks and pump up my critical damage up to 45%. They almost melt you the foundation skips. By the way, I forgot to mention this earlier but, if you are a whale with full portray, Chunyang, I don't think it matters in this game mode. Notice how my enchanted value is at 46 now. I have to make sure to bring it back to within 60 to 119 because, I need the action slot for more DPS. Here, I need to rearrange some of my treasures and floppy disks to see which affects buffs better than the other. Since I have 800 plus gold coins, best to spend on the merchant store first before we face the final boss. Any damage increment treasures are good pickup. Floppy disks are good to evolve your treasure status increment. You can stack similar treasures effect too. Time to sort out the items now. Double animal teeth are really good pick up here, thanks to lucky RNG. My tip here would be, knowing what playstyle that suits you, then pick those treasures and aim for some specific floppy disk spells. The extra items can just slot any floppy disks if you want. For those players who mix max everything, you can plan specific setup for each items though. Honestly, Xunyang can carry with luck spell effect. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary! I am going to showcase how enchanted value below 60 was easy clear. Torches lit. Hope this guide helps. Thanks for watching till the end. See you next video. Cheers.